Part of pruning, I'm going around just cutting off all these old dead spurs. See this spur, you would have thought it was dead. Look at it, it's coming out. Even though the petals are falling off the uh, blossoms, but you can tell that I have enough spurs to get plenty of apples off this tree. And since the spurs last a long time, five, six years is easy and it could go longer than that. Uh, all these spurs will keep producing. So if, I, if the plant just generates a few new spurs uh, each year to take the place of the ones that do die, that's like an equal balance. What you need to prune with? You need some loppers. You need a pair of hand pruners. I have this little sharpening mechanism. One ceramic, one's carbide. And it has uh, that style. And I can keep that blade sharp with it. You need a sharp blade. Another thing to, you need is a good saw. And this is a great saw. Stephen Hayes UK site recommended this saw and uh, it is everything he said it is. It is a very thin blade. If you hit that end on a limb, this blade could shear. It is high quality steel. You can see from the multiple edges in there that it will cut cleanly. It will cut a branch off as big as your little finger in one pass. It will also cut your finger off in one pass. To limit damage, I'm right-handed, I need a left-handed glove. If I had my fish scaling metal glove that I use when I fish, I would wear that and put this glove on it just to prevent injury. You should never hand, you have the hand that is, doesn't have the saw in it anywhere near this saw. You can severely cut yourself with these very sharp saws. Trying to show one of these that's uh, in a little bit of sunlight. See that collar right there? See how it's fatter? See how the branch width is right there? That very little bottom of that slope. In my last videos I have been, uh, you've been straining to see what was at the top of the picture. I'm trying to avoid that today. Right where that slope starts, you can see the slight coloration changes from this branch, you would want to cut that right there. This is the collar. See this collar mechanism? See how it slopes down? The cut would be made right here where it's flat. Right where the end of that tip, the edge, is. That's where you want to make your cut and then this will seal it and you follow that all the way around so that will be on a nice little angle and it'll shed water. They're hard to see especially on older wood but you can find them if you look for them. To clarify this balloon scenario inside of this tree if you cut this off and cut it off on an angle and cut into that collar you would be inside the end of the balloon you blew up so disease could go in just think of this as a tube that's about this big with a big end on it to blow up once it gets in there it's like a full-size balloon so if you cut this off on an angle to where you sheared part of this collar disease can get in on that edge no matter how small it is and go down on the inside of the balloon type chamber that is now solidified to prevent disease to get in right now nothing can get in this tree but if i had cut that piece off on an angle all the way back to here the disease could go through on the outside edge of that where you would blow the balloon up that's why that cut there is a little more dangerous because see that is still the balloon collar you can see how it went to there and there and see that collar right there is where I need to cut this, right there. You can see the little lines. You can see the lines right there, very dramatic. 
and I will cut it right on the end of my fingernail. And see that one collar is a little bit of a 45 degree angle and that's where you'll cut it off. That's where that real sharp little saw comes in because you can get to it. But I will have to nip this out and I can cut that up from the bottom. I can cut this off then I can get to that one to cut. And these will be the first cuts I make out of here and I will take that one off. See the collar? See where this comes down? And then it's it changes. You want to cut that off as flush as you can without hitting that part. Just take your time. I have very sharp clippers. I'm going to get these old spurs off. And I'm going to put that blade right above that collar. Get it started. Boom! That's all you need. It will heal over. Put the blade nearest the collar. Sharp saw, clean cut. Uh, you don't try to nick your tree, but that little cut will hit a hill over, but It'd be better if I hadn't done that. That one's going up into the center of the tree. I don't need it. This one's growing up. And rub it next to the other one. I take the top off. I'll come in here later with the saw and cut it off at the collar. This is a vertical branch. That opens it up. That plant's going straight up there, this one here, it does have some grapes on it, but if I leave it, it will get heavier with the grapes and come down on this branch right here. I'm just going to cut it off right there and come back and get it with the saw and clean up that down next to the collar and clean that off. If your tree is ever leaning over and you put a post in the ground to pull it back to where it's supposed to be, like the heavy fruit, a lot of moisture in the ground, a lot of rain, you can tell when this was planted it was straight and now it's leaning because it was trying to pull up out of the soil. So this has been on here for a long time. But see, I took two pieces of rubber hose. One is like a, a return line on a heater on a car or a washing machine, and the other is just a small... Uh, hose for watering in a greenhouse and I put the rope through it so the rope would not dig into the branches the rubber is a lot more gentle but since I need to get into there and it doesn't need to support I'm taking it out I've just cut the ropes off that way I can pull the hoses off and it with